Buying the wrong property can cost you tens of thousands of pounds. And it doesn't have to involve something like this happening. A property can set you back by huge amounts, even if there's nothing wrong with it at all. And it can happen so slowly, you might not even notice. But it's very real. And I know this because it's happened to me. And so far, it's cost me £21,000. Here's what happened. In mid-2015, I bought a two-bedroom house in Hull. It cost me £50,000, and I immediately spent £11,000 refurbishing it. I then had the property revalued at £70,000, and took out a mortgage for 75% of that amount, which is £52,500. So I put in £61,000 and took £52,500 back out again. If we ignore taxes and fees, that left just £8,500 of my own money left in the deal. The property was then rented out, and after all budgeted costs, I estimated that I'd make a monthly profit of £200, which is an annual profit of £2,400. So if you take that profit of £2,400, and divide it by the eight and a half thousand pounds that I left in the deal, then that should give me a return on investment of 28%. That sounds spectacular, right? Isn't this supposed to be a horror story? Well, keep watching because there is plenty of horror <laughs> coming up. First though, you need to understand that every property is intrinsically positioned for either growth or income. There are opposite ends of a spectrum. So the more you want of one, the less you'll have of the other. As the name suggests, income properties generate a strong level of rental income relative to the purchase price. This is sometimes called being high yielding. Very generally speaking, these tend to be properties that are cheaper, of poorer quality, or in less desirable areas. That's because even though the rent for these type of properties is below average, the purchase price is so low, it gives you a comparatively strong return on your investment. Growth properties, on the other hand, are positioned to grow in value by as much as possible over time. They tend to be more expensive properties, in more central or in-demand areas, and be of a higher standard. Of course, you'd ideally want both, a property that is producing a strong income and is positioned for high growth. But much like I'd love to eat chocolate every day and have abs, it tends to be one or the other. This means that as an investor, you need to make a decision about which is the most important to you. If you're investing for the long term and you want to maximise the value of your portfolio so you can retire in the future or pass it on, you probably want properties that are geared for growth. On the other hand, if you want income now, so you can quit your job for example, you'll want to optimise for income. Not understanding this is where I started to go wrong. Didn't finish going wrong, but started. Because in 2015, I had an income from doing something I was very happy doing and didn't want to stop. And the £200 per month rental profit made no difference to my life. What I really cared about was having as valuable a portfolio as possible in, say, 20 years time, so I could kick back and take it easier then if I wanted to. And as you might have guessed from the price, my house in Hull was very much at the income end of the spectrum. So to see the impact of this, let's visit a parallel property universe where I made a different investment decision. Whoa. At around the same time in 2015, I was considering buying a flat in central Manchester. And I came across a lovely one bedroom apartment in a great location that I could have bought for £110,000. And it didn't need any work doing to it, so no additional spend there. So again, ignoring taxes and fees, in this universe, I put in £27,500 to buy it with a 75% mortgage. It rented for £595 a month, so after deducting all costs, I was on track to be making a profit of £200 a month, or £2,400 per year. Divide that by the £27,500 I invested, and that gives you an ROI of 8.7%. So why am I even talking about this? The rental profit for both was the same, but Manchester needed more cash putting down, so clearly Hull was the better deal. Well, let's leave this parallel universe, get in our time machine instead, and see what each property was worth in 2022 compared with seven years earlier when I was making this decision. My property in Hull was worth £70,000 by the time I'd finished refurbishing it, and today is worth £80,000. That's an uplift of 14% much lower than the UK average growth over that time, which has been 35%. Not a surprise, knowing what we do about the trade-off between income and growth properties, right? What about the Manchester property? Looking at comparables, I believe the flat that was worth £110,000 is now worth £170,000, which is a 55% increase, way above average. 55% versus 14% is a huge difference. But it's not surprising, because the Manchester apartment was of a type, a location and a quality that meant it was positioned for growth. So what do these figures mean for me? Well in Hull, the purchase plus refurb came to £61,000 and it's now worth £80,000. So that's a gain of £19,000. 
But this is where we need to deviate from reality to make this a fair comparison. Because the Manchester property was double the value at the time that I could have bought it. So even the same percentage uplift would be worth more in terms of pounds. So to equalize the values, let's imagine I bought and refurbished two identical properties in Hull and achieved the same figures on both. Then my capital gain across both would have been 38,000 pounds. If I'd bought in Manchester though, I would have seen the value go from 110,000 pounds to 170,000 pounds. That's a 60,000 pound difference, which is why I say that picking the wrong property has cost me 22,000 pounds so far, and it's probably only gonna keep getting worse over time. And remember, in Manchester, I would have achieved that gain without doing anything at all. In Hull, I had to buy and fully refurbish two houses. Otherwise, without that refurbishment element, the difference would have been even greater. And it actually gets worse because there are two hidden costs with the type of cheaper properties that tend to be income focused. One is that because the rents are lower, any costs you pay out absorb a greater proportion of the rent. So a gas safety check, for example, which costs pretty much the same in any property, could knock out getting on for a month's worth of profit. The other is that as a very broad generalization, cheap properties tend to be more hassle to manage. And indeed, during my time of owning just the one property in Hull, I've had police knock down the door and had to evict not one but two sets of tenants for not paying the rent. So that chunky return on investment I should have been making on paper, I actually haven't. And then somehow it gets even worse because the rent I've been charging started at £425 per month and after all these years has now gone up to £450 per month. Whereas I've checked and the flat in Manchester that was making £595 would today command £825. So as well as a higher capital gain, the rental return on my investment actually would have increased massively over the years and uh, frankly I don't want to talk about this anymore. The point here isn't that high yielding properties are bad and it's totally possible to make the same mistake in reverse. For example, if your objective is to create an extra income stream that allows you to quit your job, then having a bigger gain in seven years time isn't a lot of good to you. In this scenario, the right move may have been to buy the two cheaper houses and on paper at least, be generating a rental profit of 400 pounds per month rather than the 200 pounds you get from the fancier flat. The point is you need to know what your objective is and buy accordingly because just making one wrong purchase can seriously hold you back from achieving your goals. But even if you get this right, there's another mistake that I see investors making that stops them from achieving what they want in property. So watch this video next where I tell you what that mistake is and how to avoid it.